Okay. Welcome everybody. Uh, this is the session, second session international perspective of the uh, panel on ensuring energy security in, in South Sri Lanka. So I'd like to welcome you OPCD for the uh, second session. People are joining from different countries as I can see. Uh, now I, I very I want to very quickly uh, explain to you the objectives of this session or, or, or rather of the symposium altogether. Now uh, uh, the, there are three main objectives. First of all we want to discuss energy related issues in South Asia with particular attention to Sri Lanka. To, uh, also to create a forum where international scholars, practitioners and researchers can exchange ideas on energy security and share best practices from different countries and different regions. Uh, also to use ICT and digital technology like Google Hangout uh, to connect and collaborate in uh, international uh, set of uh, group of people uh, in different uh, universities, industries in different countries uh, and to make this uh, a way of knowledge sharing and also doing research work uh, or future work related research work. Now, uh, why we wanted to have this kind of session in this way? Now, during my uh, career or my experience as a researcher uh, based in Sri Lanka, working on South Asian issues and uh, in, in other, uh, collaborating other regions, I found that uh, uh, there are no like a uh, very democratic, uh, open to participate and uh, focus toward young people. Uh, uh, focusing on uh, policy related issues. Now there are of course uh, different types of uh, knowledge forums, uh, conferences, uh, research symposiums. However, uh, some are very conservative or traditional oriented where you have to pay a fee, you have to go to a particular place, it's academically very uh, let's say uh, conservative. So uh, it's not really uh, open for new way of thinking. Uh, it won't those kind of events are not encouraging young people to share their uh, experience, expertise and even uh, uh, to practice uh, such uh, economic exchanges in an open manner. So uh, uh, that is the main reason of coming this kind of more kind of informal, internationally uh, connected and also uh, policy related or strategic oriented uh, research work. Now that's the background. Uh, and based on the you know the outcome of this uh, this event and this forum, we are planning to do uh, future future events, future activities. Also, I'm offline. I think. Also, um, uh, in a tip, uh, similar manner. So I like to welcome you all. And uh, as a as as a part of this session. I'd like to invite uh, Chintare Jayananda from Gandhi Business School to share the session for international perspective. Okay, thank you. I'll be online and uh, Chintare, it's your time now. Chintare? Yes, sir. Uh so, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to connect uh, the mean that he's, uh, he's having yeah, some problems uh, anyway. Don't worry about these people, I will try to connect them and please you can go ahead with the session. Uh, they are both online, so I'll try to connect them separately. Okay, so, uh, so we can, I think, uh, Charmin did the, the, the introduction, so I think uh, we can start straight away. Uh, the first one is from, uh, according to the list, is Chiranji. Uh, if you can start now, I think you know the rules now. You have been already here. Chiranjeeva, can you hear me, please? Hello? Hello, Chiranjeeva? Hello? Maybe you can start with Jagat then. Yeah, the second one according to I think it's Lahiru. Yeah, Lahiru is already in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jagat has been there for a long time, so maybe. Yeah, Jagat has been there. For, okay, then uh, Jagat can start. I think we 
you know the rules. Uh, it's uh, you have uh, 15 minutes. Well, I know you know already. You already know the uh, rules uh, in an international conference where they stop you uh, exactly after 15 minutes and not giving. But uh, here, as we still have some uh, technical problems, we might give you some a uh, little more time. But uh, after 15 minutes, uh, you have 15 minutes, and you have another five minutes of questions. And I think, uh, uh, yes, Jagat, uh, you can you can go ahead, yeah? You can start. Yeah, can you hear me and can you my, see my screen? Yes, I can I can see your screen. I can hear you. What about the others, please? I can hear you. Yeah. What about the screen? Yep. Can you, can you the other others, uh, can others uh, see, this, see the screen? Can see. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. <coughs> So, sorry, uh, Pintaka, now if you can ask, uh, now later, maybe it will be later, the Lahiri just join, and the option okay. of uh, this group chatting also, then they, they can also discuss when the presentation is going on. Maybe it will be later when other people join, you can tell that. Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, welcome, and uh, today uh, I'm going to discuss about uh, my recent study. Uh, that is the grid integration of distributed renewable energy system. So, a uh, brief introduction about me. I'm currently uh, following uh, MSc program in renewable energy in University of Agda, and uh, I have completed my BSc engineering degree from University of Rohuna, and also I completed uh, my MBA degree uh, in uh, technology management, specialized in technology management from University of Moradua. So this is uh, my presentation flow. Basically, I'm uh, starting from uh, introduce, introducing my topic and problem and challenges in uh, electricity generated by renewable sources. Uh, and basically, I'm discussing uh, technical problems and challenges here. And after that, I'm going to discuss about the solution for these problems. And finally, a simple case study about uh, Sri Lanka situation and finally concluding the, my topic. <coughs> so, if we consider energy, it is very important for our day-to-day -day activities and also as a society. So, if we see this picture, this city is shining because of energy. So, it needs electricity and fossil fuel based uh, energy for driving vehicles and transportation also. But even though this is shining well, the underlying story is very ugly picture. You can see we have to burn huge amount of fossil fuel for running this kind of city. So uh, if you consider electricity, so electricity is, we can consider as a high efficiency energy carrier. So if we can generate electricity, we can produce any other form of energy. So, you all know there are about the major problems. Jagat. Sorry. Yeah, the, the yeah. slides are not moving. Uh, so, if you can, yeah, that, that's fine now. You can see here. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay, yeah, just go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Uh, if you consider electricity, it is very high efficient energy carrier. So, if we can convert any form of energy to electricity, after that we can use and we can utilize that in electricity in very efficient manner. So when we use in electricity, it, we can consider as a clean source. So wh now what is our problem is we have to generate electricity from a clean source. So that is what uh, most people are trying and most people are interested about renewable energy sources. So here we have to produce green electricity so that we can convert that electricity to any of uh, our useful form. So, if, but uh, if we consider the problems and uh, if we consider the electricity grid, so basically you are aware about, uh, you may aware about electricity grid, that is in current situation we have large generating uh, stations, power plants and basically transmission, uh, medium voltage and distribution network. So, the, uh, we cannot, actually we cannot store grid level electricity in cheap manner. So, we have to manage our 
electricity demand and supply in real time manner. So therefore, to manage real time, uh, that means to stabilize the electricity network, we have to manage our supply and demand with very efficient manner. If we are fail with managing this demand and supply, we may end up with power blackout. So that is very important aspect. So if we consider the renewable electricity, here you can see in this graph, this yellow graph shows the wind power output, wind turbine power output within time frame. So here you can see it is intermittent power. That means you can you cannot provide constant level of power with this kind of renewable energy source. So you, the, therefore you cannot directly connect this kind of renewable energy source to low phase. So that is one kind of major challenge we are facing when we connect in the uh, renewable energy sources to grid. This is not only uh, uh, well, well, this, this problem is available not only for power plant but also for photovoltaic and most of other uh, renewable sources. Also renewable sources are distributed among the world so that, <coughs> so that uh, it is difficult to integrate and we don't have electricity access to all the locations. Uh, uh, likewise there are many problems so we have to solve these problems. So I will explain some uh, solution for integrating this distributed renewable energy for the grid. So if we consider low penetration of renewable energy sources in that situation you can have use you can use existing basically you can use existing grid. In this case you can we can provide the base load, load for our grid by using existing stable electricity generation method. It may be hydropower or nuclear power or system. And on top of that, the base load we can add, we can add centralized large scale renewable power station so that we can utilize available renewable electricity. So, but in this situation, we have to we have to solve many problems, and we have to use many advanced techniques to manage this system. For example, we have to we have sorry, can you hear me? Yes, Jagat. Yes, go, go ahead. Yes, we can hear. Yeah. We, have, we have to use advanced weather forecasting and statistical analysis to to predict about future electricity. Uh, possibilities and also we have to we cannot with this uh, system we cannot connect all the available renewable power generation directly to grid but uh, we have to uh, we have to maintain some reserve capacity in uh, renewable generation so that we can add those capacities when we require so that we can smoothly manage our grid operation also other aspects is we have to smooth our power output before connect to the grid. For example, if we see previous slide, you can see this power output, this uh, green, uh, sorry, uh, blue color power output that is that has very variation level. But if you see this red color line, it is a smooth signal. So this is this is some some kind of smooth signal so that we can connect this kind of uh, power to our electricity grid. So if we consider distributed small renewable generation, it is hard to control and hard to connect this kind of system. But we can still we can connect limited number of uh, systems to the grid without affecting grid stability. So if you see these two graphs, so here you can see this is a graph related to German power system. Here you can see they have achieved uh, about 20% renewable energy from basically wind, solar and bioenergy plants. So this is, uh, we can think this is some kind of, this not full penetration of renewable energy source, this is uh, about uh, lower level of penetration about 20%. But they are managing this system well and this is operating well because of the, still they have base load provided by uh, near, uh, 
fossil fuel based power plant and nuclear power plant without that strong base it will be difficult to manage this system also so second graph you can see they are they are managed to get their peak demand peak power demand using available photovoltaic and also medium range level using wind power so this is huge attention uh, huge achievement in renewable uh, uh, renewable power integration uh, history so now the those all solutions are based uh, basically we can apply for low penetration level but what ha what will happen if we need to integrate more and more renewable energy sources now if we integrate in more renewable generation what will happen we have to remove available constant capacity or more stabilize generation out of our system so that our uh, unstable power part will be increased so that we get in problem is managing this grid so but to get a maximum use of renewable energy we have to integrate otherwise we cannot replace our fossil fuel based power plant with the with this renewable energy sources therefore to address this problem some smart concepts like smart grid concept and technologies have introduced in recent past so they are in this case we have to more control over our grid so in this grid, uh, smart grid network we have two connections that is one is power connection other is information connection so with good communication system we are integrating all the energy, uh, all the units and entities and all stakeholders together and we can control the system with this available information and we using our algorithms and uh, and communication systems we can control this system so if we consider this uh, microgrid stuff so microgrid is very uh, advanced concept here we are generating uh, our energy requirement in locally and we are consuming in locally so that we can reduce the dependence on main grid so that uh, we can have energy security in that particular area this is got the other 5 minutes here yeah this system also already connected to main grid so that uh, so that we can if we have some problem with the system we can get uh, energy from main grid also here renewable sources like wind photovoltaic or micro turbines or for fuel cell uh, we can use for an uh, electric generation also we have energy storage systems now the, our home becomes smart home and our vehicle we can use as a energy storage media electric vehicle we can use as a energy storage media and now we are not a just consumer but we are producers we can you generate electricity within our local limit and if we have additional uh, energy we can provide to system so this system should be managed in a very advanced manner but the, uh, this is actually con concept and it is a uh, we should have proper path to uh, achieve final target in this case so if we consider so in uh, previous slides i basically discussed about the technical solution that those are the technical available technical solution for address this problem but it is not enough to address uh, technical solution we have to consider about standard and regulation and policy related issues and public acceptance so these are very important measures and we have to manage so uh, if we consider standard there are many standards or bodies like iec ieee and national standard and national institute of standard and uh, smart grid task force in europe so both uh, all are together work for making standards so national uh, renewable energy policy should be Uh, make uh, main policy requirement is making a competitive energy market so can so we can reduce the energy prices and also uh, we can share the benefits among more stakeholders in the industry the public acceptance also very much uh, important because some people don't like for example don't like for wind mill and wind turbines 
actually it's generating some noisy level and visual pollution. So these kind of issues, are, these are the real issues when we are addressing these problems and these are managed very carefully. If we can integrate, if we can join the public for investing these plants, renewable energy plants, we may get uh, some good chance to uh, reduce their impact. So now I am going to consider Sri Lanka case. If we consider Sri Lanka case, I recently collected some data from CEB and here you can see still we have only very few amount of renewable sources. Even though we can think uh, we have strong hydroelectricity base that is, that is also renewable uh, and uh, we can provide uh, base load from that. But uh, we have very huge potential for wind and solar power generation. So, but still we are using, uh, in recent, according to the recent statistics, we have only 1.3 megawatt solar power plant and 78.4 uh, wind power plant and very few amount of bioenergy based plant, that is about 6 megawatts. But if we see, if we see the available wind, available possibility, so according to the US energy, uh, Department of Energy statistics, we can have 51 gigawatt of energy from wind energy. That is the potential. So if we use, for example, if we use 4% of this available wind energy resources, we can provide, then we can provide this, you can see here, our base load is provided by uh, basically hydro and second part is provided by thermal energy. So if we can replace this thermal energy part with wind and solar electricity, we may get huge benefits for our economy and we can, re we can reduce the dependency on uh, fossil fuel and it will be a huge boost for our economy. So that will be the most efficient, uh, most uh, best answer for our energy market and electricity generation. So if we consider the problem, now, uh, recently I talked with the uh, engineer and it is not confirmed, but according to him, uh, our grid is very weak grid. Our grid network is very weak. So if we increase one megawatt, one, actually one megawatt power demand supply changes will be caused to power blackout in our system. That it is very weak system. So if we include large amount of distributed, large amount of renewable sources, it will, basically it can happen that kind of issues. That means one megawatt power, sudden power change in the system. So that will end up with power blackout. So before connecting uh, renewable sources, we have to actually, we have to, uh, we have to improve our grid system. It will be, it will not be a very large, in, not a, be a smart grid type of improvement, but also some kind of moderate improvement so that we can connect at least 20% of electricity from wind and solar. So that is my study and uh, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. I think uh, you finished uh, almost on time. That's very important. And also, uh, Thank you. Uh, I think uh, you have provided all the sources from where you have got this. Into that. That's very important. I think uh, this is the first presentation I saw so far that uh, a person has mentioned uh, all the information. So, uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, not not a question. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much because he's from Norway, so he knows uh, intellectual property right and everything very well. I think. Okay, I just wanted to uh, make an announcement to the newcomers, uh, Duminda and particularly uh, Lak Lakma welcoming them. Now, if you see in your uh, right side corner uh, along the screen, you see the sec uh, second, uh, second uh, green, green box with the uh, arrow is the screen share where you can share the screen. And the first uh, blue colored uh, box is chat box. If you click that one, your chat box will appear in your right, uh, left side corner where you can type if you don't hear, if you want to say something during the presentation, please use that. Uh, and then uh, also see if there are messages people are saying you to mute your uh, video or things like that. So please follow the chat box also. Make it active. I mean the, did you follow it? Okay. So make it uh, 
uh, keep it uh, uh, kind of uh, on or appear in the uh, left side. Lahir, do you get that? Okay, maybe Duminda, you can type something on the chat box quickly. Lahir, can you type saying if you understood this? Yeah, okay, good. Uh, Lahir, please. Okay, back to the chair. Please, sir, go ahead. Sorry, the I think you told uh, you told about the camera and uh, the mic, yeah? Did you tell about? No, yeah, you can go ahead, yeah. 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 That the, uh, the option that there's an option uh, on top of your screen uh, of, of the Google uh, Hangout where you can uh, turn off your microphone. It will uh, like reduce the whatever the noises that you are making. So that will uh, uh, reduce the disturbances. And also that uh, if you can yeah if you don't want to show your face because this is going online. If you, uh, I would I would I would like I prefer you like I encourage you to uh, show your face. But if you do not like you can uh, turn off the camera and uh, talk. So uh, yes, uh, I think we have now. Uh, so any any questions uh, uh, from that uh, presentation? For that presentation, any questions uh, from any anyone? Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, Jagat is there. You. Yeah, Jagat. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for your informative presentation. Uh, this is just for my knowledge. Uh, you mentioned uh, we can replace this uh, fossil fuel part by uh, wind energy. What is the main concern? Is the uh, first is the capital or the unit unit cost? Yeah, capital cost is also, also there. It is uh, not only for generation uh, unit, but also grid. We have to improve our grid. Without grid mm -hmm. information, we cannot achieve that kind of uh, percentage. If, uh, basically, we can connect a small amount of renewable sources, but if we go in for large amount, for example, 20%, we have to, we have, to have grid improvement. Without uh, grid improvement, it is difficult to connect and uh, make a stable grid. Is, is, it, is it, it is because of uh, inconsistency, inconsistency of uh, generation or...? Yeah, yeah, basically intermittent nature of renewable sources because you know wind power is always changing. So before connecting these energy sources, we have to smooth out the signals. So, for example, in Germany, they are connecting uh, different different location energy. That means, for example, they have wind power in different different locations. For example, north part, south part. So, they are integrating these systems so that uh, it will that mean uh, uh, average actual mm -hmm. actual power out so that we can connect to direct correct connect to the grid. That kind of arrangement also. Required. So, okay, thank you. in addition to that, we can have storage facilities, but storage is very costly one. Mm -hmm. That also major concern. Okay, Kolita, did you get the answer for yes. that? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. All right, uh, any more questions? We can give maybe one more question if there's any, any more if there's any uh, just, questions. Uh, just joining to Kolita's uh, question. Okay. If, some, if yes. somebody is contributing to the national grid on those countries, how they will be uh, treated? I mean, will they be compensated? Sorry? Now, if somebody is uh, giving something to the national grid on yeah. the energy point of view, and they will be compensated by yeah, the yeah. government? For example, if you consider Germany, there is a huge uh, tariff tariffs and uh, that means concessions. They are giving government is very supportive for renewable energy industry mm -hmm. and uh, they are giving special rates for supplying uh, electricity with renewable energy. If we can provide uh, electricity with renewable energy sources, they will give tax benefit and also rate very high rate for those kind of electricity. Not only that, uh, they are basically they are thinking about the, as the overall. For example, they are thinking about electricity industry, renewable 
uh, engineering industry so that they are improving they are giving uh, support for industry at the industry level so engineering know how and all the uh, technology base will be generated through within the country so that they can get low cost equipment and low cost investment within the country and also they can support they can do projects in other countries with high tech uh, engineering projects so and they can get uh, high that means profitable uh, economic sector likewise they are thinking so if we consider Sri Lanka situation it is not uh, just a case for uh, buying and installing this kind of system so even though we don't have overall technology base without that kind of overall technology base it may will be difficult to manage these systems because these should be managed in high tech nature because for example in Germany uh, they are using advanced satellite based uh, control and statistical analysis for for example, they are planning today for tomorrow. Likewise, they are thinking tomorrow. That means, according to those results, they are switch on or switch off available uh, energy mix. It may be come from nuclear, this much of from nuclear, this much of from renewable sources, from hydro, likewise. Thank you. Okay, Kapila, you got the answer. Yeah, so we, I think we have to move on to the next one. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Jagat, for for maybe uh, I also have a question, but uh, anyway, uh, we uh, if, uh, just a, a small a small question. Well, why did you choose Germany? You are in uh, Norway. Yes? Yeah, because uh, it was it, it is the best success country for uh, wind and solar industry. Because, I, for example, hydroelectricity. We, if we consider Norway, we have hydroelectricity most about 95 percent of hydroelectricity. So even though this is, uh, we know that hydroelectricity is renewable source, but we don't need to address the problems of intermittency and storage requirements. Because hydroelectricity has all the features. We, it, right. it has the features of. Uh, the basic fossil fuel based power plant features also high renewable energy it has good advantages but if you consider solar wind and bioenergy sources we have to solve many technical problems so mm -hmm. germany is one they, they don't have hydroelectric plants they have, very, they have very few but they have solved many technical solutions which required for renewable energy sources so that's why I take example from Germany because they are addressing all the required problems for the for solving uh, problems with renewable energy generation. Okay, thank you, thank you for the answer. So uh, I think we can move. Thank you, Jagat, for your uh, nice presentation. And uh, uh, now I think we can move to the next person. Uh, I think Chiranji has been waiting there, and also Asifa was, you know, she was also waiting. So. Uh, are we giving a uh, ladies first something or <laughs> or I'm fine. I'm like is Asifa. Is, is uh, are you there? Hello. I think she's there. Hello, Asifa. Hello. Yeah, she's there. I guess. Hello. Hello, Asifa. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, but but it's not. Uh, you know. It's not, it's not that clear. If you can uh, uh, increase, uh, if you can speak a little bit louder, please, or increase your microphone. Chris, welcome. The session uh, is complete now. Hello, Asifa. Yeah, we we can hear you, but it's not. You know that it's not that clear. So you can increase your microphone, uh, your voice, maybe your voice or your microphone, whatever, please. No, it's okay. You go ahead with the presentation. I think I was trying to help the uh, it didn't work. So please go ahead, show your slides, and then we can see uh, if they can continue. Share the screen and try it. She won't be able to 
speak louder so mic doesn't work or something. Asifaya, can you share, share the screen, please, then? OK, yes. Yeah, we can see the screen, yes. You can, uh, you can talk. Well, guys, uh, can can you guys uh, any anybody can can anyone hear her or? We can't hear, but we can see her slides. Uh. You can see her slides, uh, so that's <laughs> that's strange. You know, it happens normally the other way around, but. She needs to talk a little bit louder. Asifa, yes, can you please uh, talk a little bit louder? You are missing the most important part of this talking, I think. Okay, just a Yeah. Better. No, 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 we can't actually now. I have been trying to help her for the last three hours, so it's not, I think she has a problem with the microphone. I will try to uh, settle that through Skype, so maybe you can ask the next person to speak. Hello? Yeah, now it's better. It's better? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I have yeah. to introduce myself uh, from the start or... I no, no, you continue, continue, continue from the uh, place you start, uh, page. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm hearing a voice that is very broken up. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Much better than before. Asira, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Chintaka, you take over. The topic of my presentation is cooperation approach between Pakistan and Sri Lanka for ensuring energy security. Basically, the, uh, the theme of my this presentation is that uh, as both countries are in the group of serious energy crisis and both are striving hard to cope with the eventual power crisis. And this situation is more clear, more uh, terrible in Pakistan than the Sri Lanka. That's why I have to select Sri Lanka as a model so how Pakistanis can learn lessons from Sri Lanka to try to improve, uh, to cope with energy crisis that Sri Lankan government has taken many uh, steps to improve their crisis. So first of all is that uh, according to World Bank's uh, report, uh, access to electricity of Pakistan and Sri Lanka population is recently is that Pakistan only 67% uh, population of Pakistan has access to electricity where uh, uh, Sri Lankan uh, 66.6% population has access to electricity. Uh, now to come to uh, the, main, the, the purpose of comparison we think uh, that the situation of energy crisis is more clear in Pakistan than Sri Lanka. That's why I have uh, just uh, mentioned a little bit of comparison of uh, the population 
So, uh, now we come to uh, the ground of energy traffic problems. What are the major problems which both countries are facing right now? Uh, poor planning, uh, recent climate change, oil crisis, as we all know about that, and the politics, mostly in Pakistan, energy crisis has been uh, the management of uh, energy crisis is basically due to mismanagement uh, of energy crisis is due to politics. And one of the examples of it is that Taliban, uh, which we have made plans from uh, uh, in, in 1993. But due to politicize this issue, we are delaying this issue day by day and not try to make it uh, include it in corporate and a national policy. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we can no? hear you. I think you know the rule. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, because I didn't hear you much. You know, we, uh, we have 15 minutes, but you have already now spent like uh, seven, eight minutes. Okay, okay. So you have like seven, so seven, eight more minutes, yeah? Okay, so talking about energy crisis, uh, both countries uh, have. Uh, more probably, the thing which interests me a lot about the Sri Lanka is that biomass energy. Uh, Sri Lanka is uh, getting energy from Pakistan, Pakistan person from biomass. Whereas in Pakistan, we are not getting energy from biomass. And that seems to me to interest to take Sri Lanka as an example because we Pakistans are the aggregating countries and we are not sitting and getting uh, energy generation, uh, energy, uh, producing generating energy from biomass. So that's more than me uh, my focus on that presentation, how we can uh, create, uh, how we can use energy from different sources and these are the areas in which we can operate collaboratively and find, uh, make joint ventures. As already knows that uh, there are some areas in which we are working now. Pakistan and the US, Pakistan has offered uh, Sri Lanka to, to nuclear cooperation field uh, in for the engineers to the nuclear power plant station. Uh, and there are some also suggestions from my side that we can cooperate in different sectors, that is the energy and green solar, because Sri Lanka has done uh, very much work on these situations, whereas in Pakistan has started taking steps uh, on solar and green solar, so we can exchange uh, uh, these operations from Sri Lanka, because as my study told me that uh, we know cable energy sources uh, are contributing about 6.2 percent to national grid of Sri Lanka, whereas one there is no uh, percentage, no, point, point, point one percent percentage uh, of uh, these resources which are contributing in Pakistan uh, national grid system. So we can uh, take help Sri Lanka to help us uh, in solar and wind energy resources because then maps are there. But we are not implementing these steps. So we can learn lessons regarding the innovation and policy making from Sri Lanka. And that uh, ocean thermal energy is also another, can be another source of cooperation because both Sri Lanka and Pakistan have more types of social areas. Uh, both are also falling in tropical lands, tropical zones. That's why we can this uh, energy can be uh, expensive uh, for developing states, but we can bind hands with international community or we can involve the private sector if we both countries to make some kind of plan at some for this. So potential areas in my situation that most of the potential areas for both countries should be biomass. So uh, and the other biomass I told you in the uh, in the upcoming slides, I will tell how the bio industry can be uh, helpful for both Pakistan and what kind of uh, advantages we can get from this. 
But other potential area of cooperation between Pakistan and Sri Lanka can be uh, a, 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 can be small hydropower plants. As I mentioned earlier, that Taliban Dam is a large scale uh, project and it has been politicized. So we can make small hydropower plants as uh, Sri Lanka is calling that capacity is only 10 megawatts and these, these power plants are economical, uh, sustainable and environmentally friendly sources and Pakistan has the largest uh, canal system and if we follow this kind of pattern for energy resources so I think we can make uh, electricity, uh, we can overcome this uh, uh, energy crisis very soon. So the basic point of view of my presentation was biomass that we, uh, from which I was really impressed to know that uh, Sri Lanka in spite of uh, uh, Sri Lanka is not uh, a rebellion country but he is, he is producing, he is generating 47% of his energy from this area. So the need is that uh, uh, as we know that biomass industry is in uh, the phase of development, so both of countries can exchange joint research, co-financing and make partnerships uh, in this field through gasification technology uh, because most of its potential and availability resources are there in both countries and the advantages of this will be that it will be eco-friendly uh, eco uh, and it will be alternative sources can provide alternative sources of uh, uh, cooking fuel, especially in the area where wood and oil are scarce and expensive. In Pakistan, it can be used in and, uh, northern uh, uh, southern Punjab and the uh, northern areas where in winter season, gas uh, we are also facing gas shortages. So these are the very interesting uh, ways how we can handle these things and they, if Pakistan is follow this type of energy power so we can create local jobs for um, thousands of people and can be dependent on energy field. Uh, and, and Pakistan is also uh, Biogas energy, the thing which was very impressive for me that uh, Sri Lanka has started biogas energy, con uh, conversion, uh, biogas energy, uh, used in 1990, since 1990. And in 2005, it was initially was only just 1.9%. In 2009, it uh, uprises, uh, it increases up to 50%. So I think this is the high time for Pakistan to learn Sri Lanka and we should take services of uh, Sri Lankan, uh, from Sri Lankan to gain energy, to cope with energy crisis. So what kind of policies, uh, yeah, what kind of uh, initiatives we should learn from Sri Lanka? First of all, uh, in, in the Sri Lankan uh, government, and policy makers are sincere, have political will, uh, and they are making practical approach. They have practical approach to cope with uh, new emerging energy security uh, so, uh, issue. And second is that they have institutional approach, that they have integrated different institutions with government and they are making uh, integrate different institutions. They have Asifa, yeah, your yes. Yeah, your time Hello? is. I think almost up. If you time is almost up, if you can uh, finish it as soon as possible. Yes, yes uh, I, I think uh, everybody will agree that you had some problems. So we, we might give you one more minute or something. Is, is it all right with you? Yes, uh, only just two or five minutes. I am just finding up my presentation. Hello? Okay, yeah, yeah, just, just finish it, yes. Go ahead and finish it, yes. Yes, finish. Yes, so, an integration policy joint venture should be there as Sri Lanka is following, uh, following. And we have to focus on renewable energy resources 
to cope with all these uh, moments in a decisive book Pakistan is facing right now. So there are also some uh, very important aspects in which uh, I was really impressed from Sri Lanka that we uh, all in just few minutes, in just few words, I just want to say that Pakistan is, uh, it is a high time for Pakistan to make a national energy strategic plan for long term, uh, medium term and long term plans and there are many policies which we can learn from Sri Lanka regarding global, joining hands with global village or making solar system uh, operational in Pakistan and many other uh, schemes which we can learn from Sri Lanka. Thank you. This is all from my side. So, hand over to you, Kuchinka. All right. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Asifa. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. And uh, we can, I think, uh, go for the questions. Before going for the questions, I can tell you that now she's saying something about that she can, Pakistan has something to learn from Sri Lanka. So you might have, I think, many more questions in that case. But anyway, uh, as the time is limited, I can maybe give you two, maybe for two questions. That we. But if you have any more questions, yes, uh, I think Asifa can answer very quickly. So uh, okay. any questions? I will try. Actually, this was uh, this topic was uh, this topic needs more more research because there are some areas in which I want to take interview, but due to shortage of time and my mother's health, I couldn't take interview from Ministry of uh, 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 Electricity and Power Generation. Uh, that's okay. why. I have to uh, limit my studies. Just have to pick out some important points. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That we can understand that. So, uh, yeah, any questions? Strange that nobody's nobody's having any questions. This shows that my presentation was so much impressive that no one has any questions. <laughs> I think Duminda is asking a question, but uh, we can't hear. We can't, we can't hear you, Duminda. So, uh, is your microphone is it connected? No, you can check it, but you can type, Duminda. You can type your question, and maybe you can type the uh, answer. We can go. Yes, we question. can. We can move on to the next. Duminda, no, you type the question, and uh, question. she will answer the question. Yeah. Duminda, your mic is not connected. Huh? You type with the question and you can still go in with the, yeah. The mic doesn't work. No, but you, you can, you should connect your uh, microphone. Okay, okay. he's saying that uh, we can go yeah, ahead. I just want to say something. Okay, Sikinda, you want to say something? Can I? Please, please say, please, uh, please type so everybody can uh, hear the. Uh, <coughs> Please type the question and please uh, answer the question uh, through that uh, uh, message box so that uh, we, we will go to the next person otherwise we will uh, lose some time. So uh, I think Chiranjeeva has been waiting for a long time, yes? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So yeah, yeah, Chiranjeeva, yes, you, you can start uh, your presentation. Okay, then I'll try to share my screen. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much, Ashifa. Can you see my screen? Not yet. I th I hope it will come. So uh, maybe you can you can go ahead with the. Uh, Little bit of introduction of you, and I think you gave already gave the introduction. So, yeah, you can start with whatever the topic you have. And yeah, is it coming? Yeah, it's coming. yeah, I can see now. Yes, you can see it now. Okay, is the slides moving? 
Can you see the slides moving as well? Not moving, no. You can see the profile per slide, right? Yes. Okay, basically, yeah, um, I explained myself previously, like, I'm working for Hilton Hotels as a beauty manager, and I'm quite interested in the area of tourism and sustainability. And I recently published some articles about fair trades and tourism uh, on Sunday Read and Sunday Observer. So with that view, I'd like to go up to my content page. So it's about the... Can you see my content page? No, not yet. You, you know the rule, right? 15 minutes, OK? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, then the uh, first, uh, Me. like, uh, uh, I'm going to introduction about the, uh, uh, the emerging technologies like green technology and stuff, and how the uh, world is changed to a green color jobs, from blue color jobs to green color jobs, and the Sri Lankan, little bit about Sri Lankan tourism policy. And then I move into the context of energy with the hotels. And then, how green are we? So that means, uh, how Sri Lanka are we based in the real challenge of sustainability of the hotels and tourism? And then, the, my major topic is standardization patris, or green patrices in the international arena. And then, what policy implications for us? Can you see, see my slides? We can still see the, you know, we can still see your first slide, the profile one. We, it's not moving, so you can maybe try again. Okay. Yeah, it's moving now. So you, you go to the third slide. Okay. So uh, now you can see the needs for the sustainability aggregation within SME hotels in Sri Lanka. Uh, if you take the, uh, the revolution, the first revolution based in the United Kingdom around uh, 1780s, about the steam engine and textile industry. Then the world is moved towards the second revolution that is based in Europe, especially England, France, and Germany about railways, steel industry. And then it's come to the US. Like the, that's that's why the uh, word called white collar jobs came on 19, 1900 to 1950. So that is like more labor incentive industries to white collar jobs. And the fourth revolution is still happening in the world like California, Japan, India, about IT, organic chemicals, electronic genetic engineering, such kind of things still happening. Then the recently, like uh, around 1990 or 2000, the based in Asia, the more, more towards like green technology and green business came into the catchy words like green color jobs. So it basically based on brick, uh, as we know, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. So with that, uh, the, the more people will talk about green CSR, green policies, and everything. So with that view, I'm moving to my next slide. Uh, can you see my next slide? Yes, we can, yes. Uh, it's like uh, the development trend in the tourism. Everybody talks about papers, and we are developing, we are targeting around 2.6 million tourists on 2013. but are we ready for that challenge with the view of sustainability? Because our planet is quite fragile. We need to be handled with care. That's why I showed in the slides. So next one is demand for sustainable tourism. If you if you see like more if you go to TripAdvisor, when the most of the like Western markets, when they book a hotel, they as as far as I know, the most of the people go to TripAdvisor and see what the comments over there. That's how they decide to go to a destination nowadays. Because everything on the palm, you got iPad and you got your palm top or whatever, and they just go there and then see what are the comments about the hotel, how green the hotel are, what are the corporate, social, responsible manner that hotel acting. So I just uh, saw some figures. Uh, around 71% of the uh, from the study done on 2012 by TripAdvisor says they will make their choices for holiday more in a responsible manner. According to Nielsen and then Kuwani Group, one of the major tourist uh, reservation group in the world, the, all these studies, what they found out is the consumer want a more responsible holiday than even before. So I mean like 
when you compare about situation in 2000 is different nowadays people see more much in a corporate responsible manner can you see my next slide the Sri Lankan tourism policy yes yeah it's it's called I, I read about a little bit about the Mahinda Chintana and the Sri Lankan tourism policy none of these documents never include the part of sustainability in what how we can achieve our sustainability goal in 2016 with tourism they all about talking what is how many tourist arrivals how many hotels how many FDIs foreign direct investments and those kind of things no one talks about are we really in a position to achieve these targets by in a sustainable manner because future all the tourist demand will be shaped by sustainability that's what happening in England that's what happening in other all the major destination the highest tourist arrival in the world is France after that uh, it's USA and those countries all are looking even like Thailand like South Asian or uh, so, sorry I'm mean like Asian countries also looking at the angle of tourism in a sustainable manner so we need to look at that angle but most of our tourism policies never adapt on that factor people are doing most of the things in an isolation without any standardization that's why we need to understand my next slide the hotel in context of energy in hotel sector Sri Lanka accounts around four to five percent of the national electricity demand and energy cost of the hotel stands around 18 percent of the total cost of the operation because our policy makers is try to go with coal power and our electricity bills are going to be really high in future and that will increase the uh, hotel rates and we can't compete with the other markets like India, Thailand, Malaysia when it's come to 2020 because our hotel cost gonna be really high and we can't cope up with the world competitiveness on tourism especially air condition 50 of the energy bills consumption in the hotels are air conditioners so I just saw uh, with the recent research findings from the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce that uh, some of our SME hotels 80% of the hotels has partially or completed switch on from CFL bulb to LED as well as uh, most of the solar water heaters are implemented in the industry these are very small things we can bring our tourism in an ethical mode to the globe so we can appeal to the globe that we are moving into the sustainable mode so then our hotel will be standardized and then people I mean like tourists we look at in a different angle about Sri Lankan tourism so that's what we need to achieve to be honest in Hilton even we never achieved like 80% of the, our not our hotels are not switch on to LED some of even England some of the hotels are using the all bulbs and stuff still we are trying to achieve that target but in Sri Lanka it's automatically 80% of the small hotels are going to that I mean, automatically goes but no one recognized that as a standard so if we implement that standard in Sri Lanka then everybody everybody will get to know about what situation we are in today uh, with that view like uh, some of the hotels try to switch on to three pace power very small thing can be implemented and then we can make our own benchmarks and we can advertise and it, it can be used as a good marketing tool so my next uh, about the standardization green practices efficiency in lightning it can be I'm not expertise in technical technicality of these subjects but as a policymaker or all the think tanks or anyone can adapt these into our tourism policy and try to standardize our sustainability in tourism then we can far away we can go I mean like we can achieve a 2.6 million target uh, like rather than just try to merely particular focus on uh, infrastructure only and these are some of the examples that they do in uh, with the green practices is one of the example I found in Thailand which is uh, which is in you which is done by the UNDP uh, a program sustainable tourism so there if you can you can clearly see the investment and annual savings so as an example if you take uh, when they implement energy efficient light 
Within six months, it was paid back. If you invest in $8,500, the annual saving is $17,000. Within six months, you'll get your payback. So see how the tourism standardization is very, very crucial because it was certified by Greenleaf organization. There are a lot of international standardizations. We don't want to go for international standard. At least if we implement some policy to standardize our tourism inside the country, the benchmark, then we can obviously achieve this target. So these are one of example in Thailand. Are you guys with me? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, CJ. Okay. Can you then, go ahead, yes. uh, then what we need to do? The challenges of policymakers are not aware about this because they just try to get the investment. They just try to get the big boys over here, maybe Hyatt or maybe Marriott or maybe uh, blue chips like Crown or anyone over here to the investment. All, already the big hotel chains like blue chips, they do these things. We need to implement this in our small hotel and we are giving tax holidays for maybe Lamborghini or maybe any other fed food or anything. But we need to look at it in a different angle. If we give a tax holiday for all LED equipments which is import for tourist sector, that can be a national policy for a few years down the line if you see how much energy we are going to save. Very small thing we can bring we can market our tourism as one of the global top sustainable tourism. It's a very small thing we can do. But nobody aware about these things. The opposition never, or lobby group, or any pressure group, never asked this question from the governments. And with that, I will just uh, give a quick glance. Uh, we need to think about uh, sustainable business, corporate strategy, and corporate responsibility. We have five more minutes, yeah. Sorry? We have uh, five more minutes. Sorry for disturbing. Okay. You. Just go ahead. Right. Okay. The requirement for sustainability, we need to intervene with government, SME business, and tourists. So if you see this slide, you can clearly see on the middle the standard of sustainable business. That's what we need to target. You have sustainable policy implemented by the government, and the tourists. Automatically, consumption will go high. When you see a sustainable tourist hotel, when you, when you book in something, then we'll Previously, we asked from our peers, have you been to that hotel? How is the hotel? No, now we are just go to the YouTube and see what the standards, maybe three star, maybe four star, maybe five star. If you see something very, very crucial, like they have taken a lot of step to re um, recycle or step to waste management, then you think about responsibility and you book that hotel. So we have to look into that angle. And these are some of the international standards, green tourism. This was in England. And they helped to market and they help they give in like aggregation, bronze, silver, gold. This is on the door of the any hotel, even in Hilton's, we got a tourism silver or bronze or gold. In UK there are around more than hundred Hilton's and they have different they have internal competition even because all the GMs try to bring to the goal level to that particular hotel. So see how it's worked. These are some example, some international aggregations. So what we need is the mindset required for the future policy makers to right mindset. We have to be differentiated and you should think the global mindset rather than think, think in an isolation. Like island. We have island and then we do our things, we will really come and invest. No, that's not going to be happen soon. The people look at in a responsible manner. So last slide, I'm going to what policy implication. We are not far away. So in overall basis, it appears that Sri Lankan hotels are carrying out good green practices, but need to standardize and benchmark these hotels, the particularly in the areas of lightning, solar water heating, very small things need to be standard and use this as a good marketing tool to capture the, the big markets and then we can beat the competition from the other nation like Thailand or Maldives or countries around Sri Lanka. So then we, can, we are top destination with more ethical angle whatever the political influences or war crimes or anything leave it aside at least target our tourism, be sustainable, and be ethical. So my last side is thank you very much. 
So we have to catch the fish where the fish are. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chiranji. Yes. Uh, so uh, any questions? We have like maybe if we can have not more than three questions, that would be good. But yeah, still if you have questions, yes, go ahead, please. Uh, can I ask one question? Yeah, yes. Uh, yes, call it. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you again for a very interesting presentation. And uh, one of the uh, one point you said uh, the coal power, the unit price of price of the coal power is higher than the renewable energy. Yes. But uh, as far as I know. Still, the renewable energy unit price is very higher than the coal price, coal power. So power that's uh, yeah, um, that's because of the our Sri Lankan energy policy. They target 80 percent of the. I mean, like that might be. I am wrong on that unit cost. But in 2030, in Sri Lanka, if you take the Sri Lankan policy of the energy, they are trying to achieve 80 percent of the Sri Lankan energy through coal power. But if yeah. you look at the Sri Lanka like uh, in an isolation, a small island, we have a lot of environmental problems. And it can be, if you take the unit cost for uh, environmental cost and everything in a cumulative manner, it is very high. So that's, uh, that's why our policy should be like, they are going to reduce the renewable energy from 20% to 6%. So why is that? That's my problem. The unit cost. If you take isolation, yes, it is very low. I'm mean, like my statement is wrong. But if you take the long term and the unit cost cumulatively, like environmental cost and the next step, if you move into the uh, other cost association with that thing, the cumulative thing, and that is a big cost for us. The ashes, mm -hmm. how many metric tons of ashes going from coal power and our health problems. Now the recently we have kidney problems. In because of the uh, unnecessary usage of pesticides and other things in all the areas, and it's a big problem in Sri Lanka. At that type yeah. of respiratory problems, and then this cost going to be really high for Sri Lanka. We can't bear that because our government that uh, just recently there's a parliament debate. Uh, one parliament member, uh, Dr. Harsha, or someone from opposition, asked a question from the energy minister: What's your policy on 2030? That he said we are going for 80% of our things coming from coal power. And he never answered why is that? They are going to reduce the uh, normal renewable energy from 20% to 6% in 2013. That's our policy. And it has been the most of like the what do you call that KPMG and this, these guys who are doing the auditing. Uh, they showed that that's not should be Sri Lankan policy because in a Sri Lanka kind of small country, we can't do that. India can do that. Or maybe Russia can do that, maybe Brazil can do that, but Sri Lanka can't do that. We can't afford the cost, environmental cost associated with that factor. Yeah, I am totally agree with this environmental cost and uh, yeah. we should go for renewable energy. I just asked because uh, you mentioned yeah, 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 uh, yeah. That's my hotel. Yeah, that's yeah. a small thing, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Chiranjeev, can you uh, go, go out of screen sharing and come uh, show your face? Oh, one second. How can I do that? I'm not. Kiran Jeeva, can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Yes. Oh, yeah, very good. Yeah. Thank you. So, Kiran Jeeva, now my my question is, uh, like now you okay, talk okay, about. Okay. Okay. Do that. One second. Yeah. Just just uh, uh, again do the. Yeah. Now it's fine. I think. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, CJ. Now yeah. my question is: Now you talk about now the here the team is energy security in Sri yeah. Lanka or in the region. So now you talk yeah. about the tourism sector in Sri Lanka and how you can uh, you could utilize energy uh, or con conserve energy. Yeah. yeah. Go for uh, renewable energy sources to uh, make sure energy security within the sector. So yeah. how how do you how do you influence this to the nation? And also to the region. Uh, you have any plan or idea about that? Uh, yeah, that that's why I said standardization. The word standardization means like you standardize something. Then everybody should follow that rule because it's like three star, four star, right? Everybody to achieve that star, right? If you have a, our own policy of energy security or measurements, 
or a, any benchmark in Sri Lanka in terms of like three star, four star score. Like you have, you know that in England, like uh, if you go to a restaurant, you have the scores for a food hygiene like five star rated or maybe four star or something like that. So if you have that standardization for energy conservation in the hotels, then everybody try to achieve that, right? Then everybody will motivate towards because of that marketing tool, everybody will motivate towards recycle energy or maybe use LED rather than using normal lights or maybe they will use some uh, recycling water treatments or maybe using like solar for uh, water heating heaters or use some efficient AC machines and then we can make a standards with the technical expertise or any think tanks or any policy makers they can make some standards and then put it to that standards on the hotel sector and try to bring up like some standard that's why basically I'm talking about standardization so then everybody will motivate and then they will definitely they will go for that because it's happening in the world all the other world and they will look at I show you that uh, example on Thailand because it's happening in our region as well but our policy makers there are hotels who are doing those things but it never recognized because there's no standardization that is they do it in isolation we need to bring these all things in a pool and then make some standards and go for that for whole country okay yes uh, thanks I think uh, did you get the answer for it your microphone is again off, I think, this time. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I muted it. Okay, you turn it off. Uh, so, yes, uh, you can, uh, any, anybody has any, any question, we can go for one question, and then we, then any, if, if you have any more questions, you can type it on that, uh, the box uh, on your right, the message box. Any, any more questions, please? No, uh, uh, maybe you can uh, go for the uh, typing chat, uh, group chat for next questions. I just want yes. to inter intervene to uh, make two announcements. First of all, I want to welcome Chris because he has been trying for more than one hour to connect. So he got disconnected multiple times, but he is back. So welcome, Chris. And also, uh, uh, I, and also I want to uh, congratulate Jagat and Vish because it's birthday today. I just came to know that. So Jagat, I think we should all wish Jagat to have a happy birthday. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, Jagat, yes, happy birthday. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, sorry, no, no. back to the I mean, yeah, back to uh, uh, As I have just joined, could as I Yes, right. As I have just joined, can you check you can hear me please? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, Chris, yes, we can yeah, hear you, yes. Hallelujah. Okay, whatever it is, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to uh Chindaga, sorry. Yes, so we have four people. I think Duminda, Chris, uh, Kolita, and uh, uh, Lahir also waiting. So who, who, uh, maybe we, I can give you a chance. Like, who wants to go first, or, or can I go with the schedule? According to the schedule, it Duminda is next. But we have, I think, uh, Kolita is from the other group. But I think we should give a chance to Lahiru because he's the one who started first. I mean, who has been waiting for longest time. Okay, then uh, Lahiru, uh, are you? Are you you there? I think he just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe you can do mean that? Yeah, yeah I can continue when Lai when Lairo comes back. He yeah. can do it. Yeah, yeah, we can okay. uh, we can go with him. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Do mean that just go ahead. You you know the rule, yeah, it's fifteen minutes. So yeah, you can start. Okay, thank you. Can you hear my screen? Can you see my screen now? No, not, no, not yet. No. Yeah, do mean this? Go ahead, yes. Can you see me, my screen now? Unfortunately, no, not yet. Okay, give me. Maybe you can this. go go ahead with your introduction. You know, uh, with your background, if there's anything including. So. 
I'll maybe try this first now. Meantime, can I want not really. Me? No, you, yeah, we can see your screen, but your, in the screen we see somebody else. Okay, now yes. Can you see that now? Hello? Yes, yes. Okay, so. Wow. What we thought was. Uh, in terms of energy security in Sri Lanka, uh, we, in the sense, see there is an issue of leadership uh, to ensure uh, energy security in Sri Lanka. So, me and my myself and Chintaka Jayananda, who is hosting the event today, uh, collaboratively initiated a project to understand what are the leadership challenges to uh, address the issue in Sri Lankan context and uh, make it as a role model for the region. So we both are currently uh, doing a PhD research. My area is uh, leadership development. My area is leadership development and executive coaching, whereas Chintak is looking at uh, academic innovation. So we thought this is a great idea to see uh, the leadership challenges in Sri Lanka to address the issue or the third. So in my presentation, uh, I will discuss the first what, what energy security is and then uh, why we need this, like why, why we need to address the issues related to energy security in Sri Lankan and also in the regional context. And then uh, uh, briefly what leadership is and how we uh, could address the issue through leadership development and the conclusion. So the first, uh, we look, looked at uh, several uh, definitions of uh, energy security just to get the overall understanding what it is. So we have noticed an evolution of uh, definitions whereas uh, from uh, the International Energy Agency, the last uh, definition that we are showing here, uh, demonstrating here, is where you see affordable price. Whereas the first definition in 2001 uh, from the same organization doesn't have uh, some uh, like this wordings, affordable price. So energy security for us seems like uh, supplying the required energy for the nation for an affordable price with no interruptions. So, and we looked at why it is important because it is the center for national, environmental and uh, economic security. So this is, uh, for us, is very important because it is a source of, other source of very important securities for the nation and also to the region and as a whole for the whole world. So this is why we thought this is very important and timely topic that Charmini TRH has initiated the discussions and presentations. So what is the Sri Lankan context? So now we looked at the Sri Lankan Sustainable Energy Authority report where they said energy demands by sector, most of the uh, energy that we still use for household and commercial uses, whereas industry uses 24% and transportation is for 27 So this is, uh, the, if you see the primary sources of energy, hydropower is, we think that is our main uh, area, or the main source of our uh, power, but it's 11% due to, uh, according to the report. And uh, still we have the biomass as the main source of uh, energy supply. So this is this is the basic uh, overall idea of the energy requirement of the country. And if you see the graph, the, the biomass has been uh, decreasing and the petroleum and other sources, uh, uses of other sources has been increasing. So due to this, we have understood several issues 
due to these uh, changes within a few years of time. So, so the next slide I will discuss a few uh, regional. Uh, first, the, the why it is important. So, this is, is in uh, South Asia. So, what happens is dominated by state owned electricity. Overall uh, region, if you see, it is quite dominated by uh, state owned uh, uh, supplies and also high polit politicized uh, uh, nature of the, the sector and also overall uh, administration. Uh, the, there are a lot of uh, management and leadership issues. Uh, if you see uh, uh, kind of co managing the cost, managing the operation, and efficient, ensuring efficiency and uh, effectiveness within the sector has been, uh, you know, like emerging and increasing issue, issues within the sector as we identified. And, uh, so when you see the Sri Lankan context, it's like if you see uh, mainly in Sri Lanka, the commercially traded energy used in is limited to electricity and uh, petroleum. So we have a high dependency on uh, imports, the, the world price hikes. So this this break this is a, uh, a huge barrier for us to make energy security for the nation because we are highly dependent on other nations who are uh, providing us the energy because uh, as I explained in my previous slides it's uh, electricity and uh, petroleum power so most of them are coming from other countries especially from Middle East and uh, also. We don't have a regulatory body to streamline the energy market. So we we have an energy policy. We had access to that, but the the, the policy makers are highly politi politicized, and we don't have a national uh, system as Chiranji will discuss. And what we have at the moment is uh, Ceylon Electricity Electricity Board and also Petroleum Corporation. Indirectly, they control. Uh, of the energy sector without the common masses knowing. So it is uh, highly politically uh, influenced and the, the policies are made on political agendas rather than uh, considering the needs of the nation. So for example, I can uh, give you the hybrid car. When, they, when the car was introduced, uh, to the country it was highly popular and uh, quite affordable, but uh, not having a national policy towards uh, energy security and uh, for the overall sector, the government increased the tax of the car, the car, and uh, in a way discouraged the use of hybrid car and encouraged uh, uh, petroleum-based uh, motor cars. So, so why again? Why we see all this through these uh, issues is there's a leadership issue. So again, uh, private sector, they are, we are increasing the private sector involved to supply our energy. Again, this is again, uh, you know, we don't have a streamlined process to get uh, or outsource our energy sector to the private organizations. So, so again, again here, what we see or we, what we would like to emphasize is uh, the, the lack of leadership and lack of uh, ownership for the process. So again, and the next one is uh, the social, technological and political barriers that we have to implement uh, other sources, other energy sources like uh, height. For example, we as a Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka, we are the, as a country, we are kind of a gifted uh, nation with a lot of uh, natural resources. But why uh, we can't implement those projects that, that, that is a timely need, why we can't do that is, again, uh, we don't have political and social leadership. Uh, nobody creates a sense of urgency for this. So we are highly dependent again on, as I discussed uh, in my early points, that we are highly dependent on uh, other sources which are harmful to the society as well as to the environment and uh, expensive. So well, yeah, five minutes here. Yeah. yeah. Minutes so, okay. Again, uh, the, the other point is uh, 
we initiate some good projects. We cannot deliver results through these initiated projects to address the energy security. That is another issue that we have. And then the one is increasing demand uh, according to uh, Sri Lankan Sustainable Energy Report that uh, we found that it is uh, the growth is annual growth is three percent and the waste the the waste waste is huge in Sri Lanka as far as I know so if we can conserve energy and uh, try to address these issues I think we can bring solutions to the nation in terms of energy security that is our argument so how we do that is through leadership so we don't believe leadership as a position or having authority we believe that it is your ability to uh, get people together for a common purpose and inspire them to uh, resolve these differences uh, and also uh, we, we believe that leadership can arise at any given time, irrespective of the of the level that you employ or the level that you operate, and the, in any any level of your uh, the so, so, as a society, based in society also, we believe that uh, any level in your society, irrespective of education or, or authority that you have in your current roles, we believe that uh, leadership can arrive, and through this, we can bring the solution to this uh, the issue that we are having as a nation as, and as a region. So that is uh, the idea and uh, energy security through leadership giving the right direction to the country and then to the region. So we need, well, the problem we see is with the lead, not with anything else. So, and uh, I remember Jagat was discussing a few things related to uh, getting public opinion and the support and the involvement. So again, uh, to get this support, uh, we believe that it's, it's all leadership. So through leadership, what we try to achieve is to get efficient and effective use of energy and, in, uh, and encourage conservation uh, first. The f for example, now if you know, we have the first platinum rated green uh, garment factory in Sri Lanka and also other two uh, competitors like Mars uh, and also the, uh, the Brandix also got a uh, green uh, gold, gold rated green factories in Sri Lanka. So why the government cannot uh, or the society cannot encourage more like this as we have like for example sunlight for 8 to 12 hours a day so why, why don't you encourage those sort of things so, so what we try to do is through leadership development encourage those those type of uh, initiatives and effective use of funds and timely delivery of high quality projects uh, we discuss uh, I remember I think Kholi asked some questions about bringing some sponsors into the country what happens if uh, somebody suggests a nice uh, came up with a good idea and uh, bring a solution to the, the issue and the problem is our authorities wouldn't uh, accept it right because uh, they have uh, politically influenced agendas within uh, giving solutions to this timely issue. So, and also creating national awareness of the importance, connecting uh, the schools, the universities, and encouraging them to come up with different ideas and to, to deliver uh, out desired outcome to to address the issue is our another another aim through leadership. Look at uh, and, and looking at uh, alternative sources like solar, tidal, and wind. Uh, and uh, here again, we what we try to do is encourage projects through uh, education system, for especially from uh, students in the universities. So, which is low cost, uh, politics free, and uh, young innovative talent. So this is what we try to achieve uh, through our project. And uh, so to conclude, if what we believe is if the leadership issues of the energy sector and the country as a whole is addressed, the security issues discussed will be directly or indirectly addressed. So this is from uh, Rajasinghe and uh, Dayananda. And this is yet to be approved. So what we, uh, our plan is to uh, carry out a research, further research on this and uh, uh, come up, uh, actually we are social researchers, so we, we are trying to initiate a qualitative research on this and uh, try to prove this 
if, if it is a possibility, we would like to start with this from schools and also from universities and influence the whole society to conserve energy and then uh, to uh, and to encourage uh, go for alternative sources through again uh, education and knowledge sharing. So I think this is a possibility and uh, we don't have issue as we see if we resolve this leadership issue in the country as a well, whole as well as in the society and in uh, education system. So that is what I have to say. Thank you very much for listening. And if there's any question, I'm very happy to answer. Yes, uh, thank you to this. Uh, uh, any questions? Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, it's Kumakoli there. Dominda, please remove your screen. Yeah. So, I'll so call it that the, you have a question, yes? Yes, call it. Uh, I have a question because uh, the conclusion is uh, changing the leadership in the country and the society. As far as my knowledge, it will take some decades, you know, but we can't wait <laughs> such a long time for this type energy problem. And what do yeah. you think about it? I mean, uh, you know, the idea is to start from the grassroots level. So the leadership, in the sense, it's not uh, country's leadership we're looking at yeah. at the moment. I know, I know. Yeah. So we we influence actually uh, like uh, if you start from the kindergarten and uh, let them or make them aware that there's a there's a such issue that uh, the nation as a whole need addressing or thinking of and encourage con conservation first. So and then. Uh, Think of uh, policy decisions, which we, which is a huge task. So, what the other plan is to encourage schools and universities first, and think about it, and then uh, to move more into other, uh, let's say, Pradesh Shabas and you know regional secretaries and all these you know governmental bodies later on. But to the through the leadership, what we uh, try to encourage is to create a vision for the whole country. It's, it's not. I'm not talking about country's leadership uh, uh, through, let's say, social leadership. What we try to uh, uh, create is awareness first, because the, the main uh, problem we as a nation have is we don't have the right information at the right time, and we are not aware what's on at the moment and what is going on in the world. So if we first encourage them to, for example, the university, if you see. Uh, the ways that they do in terms of uh, energy is huge, and if you see the street lights, for example, uh, I think rather than thinking of uh, ensuring security through uh, rene renewable or alternative sources, we can, I'm sure, we can ensure uh, the energy security through uh, conservation. So the two companies that I work for in Sri Lanka, we encourage kind of uh, saving schemes where we uh, reward our employees. Uh, from rather than paying for the electricity board, uh, we uh, initiated a project to pay our employees if they could save our electricity board. So things like uh, the minor things. So we, we, our plan is to start, you know, small, but uh, grow it uh, big later on. So that's 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 the concept that we try to, you know, communicate for the nation and to the region later on. Uh, yeah. I would like to ask yeah. a relevant question. Now, I actually have, a, um, I support your idea of leadership for uh, change the orientation towards energy. But why don't you change the top? Uh, why you always talk about bottom? Maybe by, for example, 2015 or 16. <laughs> that opportunity. I didn't get it. Sorry. Now, 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 why? Why we always talk about? Oh, that, that, that's the problem with Sri Lankans. They don't, they don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> So to order, now start with, let's say, we are going to have a presidential election maybe in 2015 or 16. Now maybe mm -hmm. we uh, implement uh, your uh, idea not by uh, top to bottom to top, but still from uh, top to bottom. If you also apply your theory and support, maybe we can start from 2015, changing from top and to uh, the bottom, uh, green leadership, something like that. 
it's not a mean, no. Yeah. no no he, he, can, can he, i add to something to what chavin just said little bit fast sorry can, can i add something with what chavin just said like in the western world we have like pressure groups like in england you have greenpeace and those kind of association where put a huge pressure on the government and then they have to adapt that thing so like big pressure groups or like recently like in fair trade also there is a big pressure group in england which is push the government to buy the prayer products for the government like that so you can make like bodubala sena in sri lanka doing something yes. not nowadays like you can create like that kind of like thing to pressure them what tamin said to talk then they they have to adapt in their policies about the energy security or energy fellow what do you call that uh, energy stewardship uh, then it will be much uh, much quicker result rather than going for a long time what uh, call is it like rather than looking for a very very long time or decades or something i mean so just uh, now the question was related to my presentation so i mean uh, my idea with this is we as a nation first we should believe that there is a potential with this so if you initiate a project you got to believe this first and then uh, try to deliver the outcomes so we me and chinta gayanand what we try is we first believe that there's a high potential for energy converse, conserve, conservation and then to ensure uh, energy security while looking at uh, other sources as alternatives so i know it's a big challenge so if somebody doesn't take the challenge so that's that's what happened to the nation as a whole we nobody takes a challenge nobody takes a responsibility nobody has the ownership so that's why we try to address the leadership issues uh, in terms of energy security so in leadership you take the challenge you fight at the front and you try to deliver and if you fail you accept as a failure and if you uh, reach you give it to the followers or the community so the community feels the feeling of ownership these are very nice words when you talk about it but to make it happen it's a challenge so if we all here as uh, uh, somewhat educated people who has kind of a interest to the nation and nation's development and also to address the energy security issue i mean we can start small and we can be leaders to run the project and uh, reach our goal not not in 2012 2013 or 14 Uh, maybe in 10 years time or uh, you know next generation will carry on and at least they will reach something out of this so we got to continue and believe in it thank you yeah, yeah thanks to me they as part of the part of the presentation you know I, i also contribute to the same presentation of doing this so maybe i can also add a little bit to make things clear here we i think we did not uh, try to go to that politics side of it We, yeah. we mentioned that leadership is all about uh, it's it's uh, it's in all, it's all level. It could be it could be the driver of the bus can uh, say say some energy if he's aware that there's a, there's an energy uh, uh, you know uh, like loss or something happening because of him uh, he's turning on his uh, the engine of the bus all the time. So it is it's like leadership of all levels could be organizational leadership, it could be a bus driver, it could be someone of home who takes that. leadership and uh, the, the 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 most important thing about this era what we are living here is is uh, people are getting more and more aware about things the awareness of the things uh, are becoming increasing that that that's what it does in this this uh, this, this uh, i think this new world so we can use those things and we can also use leadership to create and and uh, uh, to uh, uh propagate or, or to create this awareness among people so that people will could be community leadership or it could be a principal of a school who can do that so uh, they all will uh, will understand that there is a potential there's an opportunity for us to uh, uh yeah Con conserve this and and do some and suppose the idea we we did not want to that, go to that that bit you know the political bit of it anyway yes uh, i think we can go to the next uh, thank you uh, for uh, for the questions and thank you for thank you to me the 
and thank you for making that uh, oh, controversial type of <laughs> presentation. So uh, yeah, we can go to the next this one. Uh, Lahiru has been waiting for a long time. Yes. Sorry. Very interesting. Thanks. It's interesting. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Lahiru, uh, are you there? Lahiru. Hello. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, Lahiru. Yes. Okay, sure. Hear you, yes. So yeah, you can start. You know the rules. Yeah, you can. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. You know the rule is 15 uh, minutes. You have 15 okay. minutes, and you get five minutes uh, for the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. You can start now. Yes. Uh, you can start can you sharing. My, yeah. You can, can start you sharing. My screen now? Yeah, you, you can share. Yes. You start sharing. I have. Okay. I have shared it. Uh, can you see it now? Uh not yet. Hopefully, it will come soon. Uh, I have shared it already. Yes, we uh, can see now. You can go ahead. Ah, okay, sure. Okay. Uh, what agreed. about the others? Okay. What about the others? Just, just wait a second. Yeah, what about the others? Can, yeah, I think yeah, they, can, they can see. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Okay, sure. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, I'm Lahiru Bivkrama, and I'm going to deliver my presentation on, under the topic. Uh, Strategy plan for energy sector of Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce uh, myself to all of you. Uh, I have graduated from uh, Faculty of Information Technology of University of Morocco in early 2010, and I'm a, a Microsoft certified technical specialist in both uh, web technologies and SharePoint. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm also. Good. Go on. I think it's gone. <laughs> yeah, he's back. He's back. He's back. Yes. The world of dialog or Mobitel 3G. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, there are things you uh, cannot blame the president for. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm going moving back to the topic. Uh, and. Uh, uh, first, uh, let's see uh, what are the energy sources currently using in Sri Lanka, and uh, they can be mainly divided into uh, non-renewable and renewable sources. And the renewable sources include uh, biomass, uh, the organic uh, non-fossil materials, which currently has a huge buzz with the uh, environmental-friendly uh, green concept around the globe, uh, and uh, the hydropower, which includes uh, 11 mega hydro electricity generating plants which plays a main role in energy sector and uh, with the climatic characteristics of the this part of the world uh, uh, the uh, hydropower uh, one is having a, a, a main uh, priority and uh, and solar energy and wind energy sources also emerging in Sri Lanka in uh, last few years and on the other hand uh, run non uh, renewable energy sources such as coal uh, petroleum and uh, natural gases plays a major role in uh, national energy supply of Sri Lanka. And uh, according to the Mayuri, yes, we can't we can't see your presentation now. So if you can try to uh, share the presentation as well. So go ahead. Yes. Uh, anyway, I have already shared it. Can you see it now? It will come. I think it will it will be available soon. Hopefully, you just go ahead. Okay. Sure. Uh, uh, now there's a graph uh, which. Uh, showing the uh, latest figures of uh, Sustainable Energy Authority of Sri Lanka, uh, which uh, I was also wanted to correct when the previous person uh, doing the presentation, he said uh, the hydro is only 11% and thermal is having a major contribution in Sri Lankan energy sources, but uh, according to the uh, the latest uh, facts, uh, it's hydro uh, providing 43%, uh, thermal providing 41%, and uh, coal 50% and other non-renewable uh, energy uh, sources providing uh, 1% and uh, the, uh, the challenge Sri Lanka facing uh, currently <coughs> is with the, uh, the third years of civil war and ends in uh, 2009 there is a huge demand for energy especially from the, the, uh, the northeast area and uh, uh, can you see the slide now? No, not yet. Unfortunately, not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, Maybe you can try again so that. Uh, 
Okay, sure. Try sharing uh, it again. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, according to these uh, diagrams which I'm showing here now, uh, the there is a rapid growth of demand for the uh, petroleum uh, as well as for the uh, uh, electricity after 2009, and uh, these numbers are getting uh, larger in each year. Uh, and uh, Sri Lankan government uh, ha should have a correct strategies to meet the, these needs of uh, of this rising uh, people's requirements. And uh, uh, to move forward uh, and meet these energy demands, uh, we should mainly concentrate on uh, energy generation, uh, energy distribution, and energy saving according to the uh, the the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities which we have in Sri Lanka. When we are uh, when we are looking at them, uh, these are the three main sections which uh, strategically we we, we should uh, uh, tackle. And when it comes to the energy generation, uh, thermal sources or the fossil fuels and the hydropower. Yeah, Lahiru. Oh mainly as uh, those are the two. I think it's a uh, 3G, 3G program. <laughs> 3G or 4G? Yes, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, sure. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the hydropower, uh, government is actually currently working on new large scale projects uh, such as uh, uh, Upper Kotmale, which will uh, generate large amount of energy to the national grid. And other than uh, this, uh, there should be a proper plan to develop small case of uh, scale of hydropower plants. Uh, especially in rural areas, and uh, uh, biomass is another major alternatives which we can look at the uh, at uh, there are uh, uh, large extent of uh, unproductive lands which can be better utilized as energy plantations, and uh, this will also enhance the green cover of the country. And this will reduce the sums of important fossil fuels, and also this is a good solution to areas uh, which uh, grid electricity may not be reached due to the transmission uh, difficulties. Uh, and solar systems uh, is another solution for supply energy demands, as most parts of our country, such as uh, north, uh, northeast, south, uh, kind of areas, are having a good. Uh, sunlight uh, most of the times of the year and we should be considering on uh, use uh, and uh, moving forward with the energy generation uh, wind power is another energy source uh, which we currently using hardly for the national energy generation and there are uh, coastal areas and central province and the parts of Sabargamu and Uwa province uh, where wind power generates can be utilized uh, very successfully. Uh, according to the energy specialist, uh, 4,100 uh, square kilometers of wind area can generate 20,000 of megawatts <coughs> which uh, will create a huge amount of uh, energy demand. Uh, uh, other than the uh, previous uh, uh, energy sources, uh, tight and the sea waves uh, can be used as energy sources as Sri Lanka is surrounded by Indian Ocean. And uh, for that also we should uh, get uh, expertise, knowledge and uh, technologies from uh, the other countries. Uh, and finally, uh, there is a nuclear power option is, uh, which we can consider, but uh, there are lots of limitations and issues which we, which comes with this option. And uh, uh, other than uh, looking for enhance these uh, energy sources, uh, government should also work together with uh, private investors uh, to get maximum out of them uh, for the uh, energy generation. Uh, 
and as energy generation is a main factor of uh, catering energy demands, uh, distribution is also playing a, a major role as well because uh, according to the uh, statistics uh, given by the, uh, the National Energy Authority, transmission and distribution loss is 10.67% in year 2007, uh, which is a considerable amount. Uh, to cater this, uh, government should uh, concentrate of using uh, upgraded equipment such as uh, uh, super... Uh, uh, what is uh, Superconductive materials, which uh, power wastage is minimum, and uh, expanding grids to reach areas where renewable energy plants can be built uh, will also reduce the distribution loss in a significant amount. Uh, Nairu, I think Chaminda is sharing your presentation, so you can maybe uh, go to his screen and uh, see what uh, uh, you know, see what screen he's in, and you can uh, talk according to uh, that slide. Yeah. Uh, can I see it now? Chaminda no. is sharing okay, uh, your, your screen. No, uh, uh, Charlie, this, uh, this is not this is not the presentation which I sent. I have sent a, a later one. Okay. I have okay, then I have sent. Okay, then, okay, then apologize about it, uh, guys. Yeah, you, you can go ahead, uh, Lyrius. Okay, sure. Uh, and I was in uh, energy distribution, and uh, uh, the third uh, uh, area which I said we should uh, concentrate about is the. Energy uh, sa energy saving area, and uh, when ca considering the uh, uh, the strategies which we should uh, implement in countries like Sri Lanka, uh, there's uh, saving is one of the uh, main area which we should consider. Uh, for this, uh, government should uh, take the uh, lead by take proper actions to public awareness, and uh, there is a uh, a huge issue of uh, uh, electricity theft in uh, in Sri Lanka, and uh, according to ECB, uh, they have lost uh, millions per annual due to this uh, electricity theft issue. Uh, so, if uh, the public awareness uh, get uh, in in a, in a faulty manner, if uh, government can uh, in increase the uh, public awareness these issues will get uh, reduced and uh, also uh, maintain existing uh, street lamps would also save large amount of money and energy uh, uh, and uh, uh, while maintaining existing street lamps uh, we should move to the uh, solar powered street lamps uh, which will enhance the energy usage and uh, and also well, we have uh, four minutes here Okay, sure. And also, uh, when moved to the uh, current transportation system in Sri Lanka, it also caused a huge loss of energy to the country and uh, restricting high fuel consumption vehicles and encourage people to import uh, more hybrid uh, vehicles will be a good solution. Uh, and also, by enhancing public transportation, uh, government can encourage people to use them more, uh, more rather than using uh, private vehicles for their daily use. And uh, when it comes to the uh, households, we can save a considerable amount of energy by uh, moving people to new energy efficient technologies and encourage, encouraging them to uh, save more, uh, such as offering uh, discounts uh, to them if they have reduced uh, their monthly usage of uh, electricity. And uh, there are also uh, technologies such as uh, the uh, LED bulbs and uh, the dual cookers, uh, which we can use in much in uh, rural areas. Skype call, which can come on a little while. Can I hear a bit? Uh, Sorry about the disturbance. I think. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, and uh, and the uh, and uh, and the other area, we should have a energy strategy uh, for the industrial sector. Uh, by creating uh, energy conservation standards and encouraging them to use uh, methods such as central air conditioning systems to save uh, more energy. And uh, if we can implement uh, these strategies, we can fulfill the energy requirements uh, uh, which uh, 
increase in in day by day. Uh, but uh, this is not just a responsibility of government. So every sector should uh, step forward and to make this uh, true. Uh, I think uh, that's the end of my presentation. I think uh, you haven't seen the most of the presentation, I guess. Yeah, we we didn't see almost. We didn't see almost all. all <laughs> no, 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 uh, nothing. Right. Fine anyway. So uh, anybody has any questions? Maybe why there was no video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody has any questions? So we, we we have I think time for maybe two questions, not more than that. Please, if I you have, have go ahead. I have a question actually. Okay. First of all, now uh, now that that's why I asked you to send your presentation on time. Uh, then I could have shared it. He has sent the older one, and now we are updated a bit. So I could. That uh, that was my mistake. Uh, I have sent the wrong presentation to you earlier. I have okay. sent the correct one later. Okay, so uh, and also uh, my, my question is, what is the probability of two people having uh, the birthday in the same day? <laughs> Anybody have an answer? Who, who are the two people? <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so we have. Uh, you don't have to answer that, but you can find out later. It's very, very, very low probability. Yeah. So today, Lahiri also has the same birthday like Jaga. So we had also wish him. Uh, happy birthday. Oh, great. Okay, live. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you, Raj. <laughs> happy birthday. Everybody can sing together this. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than asking a question, that will be better. Okay. <laughs> we can go to the next. Hello. Chris, you have birthday also today? <laughs> <laughs> I think. Chris gone off. Chris, he's gone off when you ask that question. I think. <laughs> I think he's stuck. Okay, we can go to the next one. Interview. Yes. Uh, so there's, it seems like there are no questions uh, for Lahiru, maybe because uh, you didn't have uh, your presentation available. So the best thing is you can send, you can share the presentation if you want. If you okay, like sure. to share it with others. So through maybe Google Hangout or whatever the uh, means you have, and uh, we can go to the next person. Chris is not available, so we have two. We had two people. Now we have one person. I think Kolita is available. So yes, Kolita can go ahead. You can uh, maybe wait uh, for Chris. I don't know uh, what will happen with him. So yeah, yeah just go ahead, call this. Okay. You know the rules. Yeah, it's 15 minutes yeah, and yeah, five minutes yeah. for you. Uh, the question yeah yeah I, I will not take 15 minutes because uh, most of the things I need to tell already told here okay already have been told uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Lairu and Bandula and I I, mm. I I just give my main message very shortly because now it's uh, 1.30 and uh, yeah my topic is uh, provision for Energy provision for rural areas in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my profile I think for most of you already see. I'm just got uh, BSc in uh, Peradeni and then uh, MSc in Karlsruhe and Stuttgart and now PhD candidate. And uh, this is uh, can you see this figure? Uh, yeah, you know this. Fi uh, yeah, we can see yes. Yeah, this is a uh, we we should not uh, confuse with the energy and the electricity. You know, when we because uh, I think Lairo just confused with the electricity supply and the energy supply. In energy supply, the hydropower is uh, it's 11 uh, percent. This Bandula said because he took uh, 2010. I took 2012, it's 80 percent. And uh, main part role is doing by the biomass and the uh, 45 percent petroleum. And other, other uh, encouraging thing to talk about the rural energy is approximately 75 percent of our population living in rural areas. And according to the World Bank record, uh, report in uh, 2012, only 35 people households getting uh, the electricity supply from the grid. Uh, 
this is just to show the current situation and uh, can you see this uh, chart here this is uh, how we uh, the energy we are taking for the electricity and uh, almost 60 percent it's uh, thermal energy and uh, 28 hydropower and uh, for example in uh, 2011 40 percent hydropower and 50 uh, percent thermal energy because uh, you can see this uh, small uh, pie chart uh, there are this hydropower is almost constant but this increase in demand of uh, uh, electricity increase in demand is supplied by the uh, fossil fuel and you can see the renewable energy is around 1% but this is not the way we should go because uh, energy is not a single entity we can talk it's only energy energy and sustainable development you can see it's directly interrelated and energy related interrelated poverty jobs income level agriculture production social economic issues and environmental quality if you consider the small communities or rural areas uh, these all factors directly related with the economy so we need to change our fundamental regarding the energy especially when we talking with the rural areas and the approach is integrated renewable energy for rural communities we need integrated approach and uh, I took from uh, this from our policy paper in Sri Lanka they are the uh, they talk about some some integrated rural de development in regarding the rural energy but here they talk about uh, the energy electricity is must integrated with the uh, road water health education some social infrastructures but uh, this is not my point today I am talking about another integration I am basically talking about the integration with, with the resource and the community in that rural areas and uh, this is example from the Europe because it's a little bit familiar to me I can talk a little bit confidently when I go to this thing in a European Commission they launch event for developing these rural and small communities they said the program is smart cities in that the key area is they said renewable and low carbon energy and other thing is main point they mention is decentralized energy infrastructure this is the correct way we have to go because when we see the small communities or villages the more sustainable ways we should find the source resources and the people from the community and we can go for green low cost renewable energy and we can have a decentralized energy infrastructures and uh, the main three point is developing rural energies we need to give high priority in when we make policy decisions in the country this is in a higher level decision making and then this uh, rural energy is must be uh, decentralized as I said managed by local people use local resources to do more success, uh, sustainable way and this energy development must be integrated with other aspects of the rural development overcoming the barriers and other political issues and uh, when I talk with the renewable energy I will just share the available and what is suitable for Sri Lanka 
and you can see in the optics biomass biomass is a potential area we can use because uh, this this area is already developed in the world for example this uh, crops and in the town it's landfill gases we can collect and these are not uh, much complex things at the moment and uh, solar energy uh, still we are the people who is providing market because we are not developing any uh, photovoltaic things for example uh, we are exporting uh, most of the silicon from our country uh, as I know it's uh, one ton of silicon we are giving for some few dollars less than ten dollars and that which can make thousands of solar cells and hydropower is already developed in Sri Lanka I think the big hydropower plant are saturated and now we are going with micro hydropower and wind energies we have good potential and we are working on that but when you come to the marine, ocean, tidal wave still if you consider in the world this is still developing and unit cost is very high we should not go this kind of thing at this moment and uh, other than that uh, for example uh, you can see here this picture the hydrogen uh, the hydrogen energy also renewable energy this is uh, something uh, high tech people use like uh, Germany they produce uh, only the have five minutes five more minutes okay okay and uh, this is the source and the uh, you can see how it can uh, come to the needs I will explain with the next slide this one you can see purpose heat electrical power cooking health agriculture transportation communication in all areas you can uh, go with the available uh, renewable energy source sources and uh, I will conclude uh, in Kyoto protocol we have a target to reduce the greenhouse gases and uh, the challenge is we have to put get this challenge we have to do something very genuinely and we have to give our commitment to develop political will to prospect resource and protect resource and nature and uh, the next one is uh, we all know this uh, crude oil will be not everlasting in few years so we should go for this renewable energy so need to introduce economically viable and uh, uh, environmentally sustainable and socially accepted renewable energy technologies need to promote private sector NGOs and cooperate for grid connected and off grid energy service using environmentally sustainable renewable energy technologies in order to meet these challenges, the future energy policies should put more emphasis on development and development of renewable energy sources. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you, Paul. Yes. So uh, uh, we just move. We can move on to the questions. We are running out of time. So uh, any questions from anyone? Hello. Nobody. Eh? No questions. He's in Germany. He, he's in. He, he's been living in Germany and he's still living in Germany. Yeah? So you maybe Chris can ask about about <laughs> the German no, German no, no. policy. Maybe. No, I just can. <laughs> now I'm living in Sri Lanka, but I used to live oh. eight years in Germany. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah, we can understand that there are a lot of things that we can get from Germany and oh, these yeah, Europe yeah. countries. So, That's yeah, uh, so it seems like no questions. So, uh, any questions? Germany is targeting. No? I think uh, we can go with Chris and then uh, maybe have a very general discussion at the end. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, okay. Chris. Okay. Uh, okay. okay, thank you, uh, Colin. Thank you for Thanks, your uh, thank presentation you. and contribution. Yes. Uh, so, Chris. You can start with your presentation. It's a bit. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you very clearly. Yeah. Yes, uh, and, and the thing is, uh, you know the rules. You know the rules, it's uh, 15 minutes. 
for the presentation and, and will... five minutes five minutes for the questions. For questions, okay. Thank you. Yes, it's very easy. Um, it's very really easy. You know. That's good. Uh, I, I have some talking to do. Um, uh, I would like to thank you for giving me the chance to talk here. And I am looking at a row of pictures on my screen of some very uh, good-looking men. Uh, I think the only problem is I have two pictures of Chaminda, which I think is a bad thing. <laughs> uh, so I don't know why that is. Um, uh, Chaminda, are, are, are you going to put uh, my slides up, or will we do without those? Uh, actually, I, uh, oh, let me check. Yeah. Now, if you can go, uh, do, you don't have them with you, right? Uh, I, I wouldn't want to uh, knock this over. It's OK. Uh, we will go with that. I'm sorry, but I'm not OK. Sure. Yeah, please go ahead. That's OK. Yeah. Right. My, my, I want to uh, uh, take a slightly different view from some of the excellent uh, presentations. So I've, I've heard part of about four or five of them today. Yeah. And, um, uh, and, and, and my story is is a bit like I did spend one year in Sri Lanka, and if I came out of my flat uh, in the gumbo uh, and said to uh, a three-wheeler driver, how do I get to uh, Bentota from the gumbo, uh, his answer might be, well, I don't think you should start from here. Uh, and very often, uh, on a journey, the place that you are in is not a very good place to start to get to where you want to be. But you have in Sri Lanka the situation you have, and uh, you must um, address the very important problems of energy which you have. Now, my paper was headed Power Struggles, uh, and it's electricity supply based on thinking from the future and not from politics. Now, for developed nations, a constant and reliable electricity supply is fundamental to almost every part of the waking and sleeping lives of a population uh, focused on the desire to consume more. Uh, only water and food and shelter come higher on the list of basics. However, developed nations are now common in their search for ways to rely less on traditional sources of energy. It has long been predicted that demand will soon reach uh, beyond supply. Mankind, in a global sense, increases in number. It's now about 6 billion people and perhaps 9 billion within about 50 years. And with that increase comes a demand for energy supplies that goes far beyond the resources of our planet or our current reserves or technology. Answers to providing sufficient global energy lie in two distinct areas. One is scientific and technical, and the other is sociological. So often the focus is on the first, and that's what we've heard a lot about this evening, the desire to generate more electricity from finite sources such as coal, oil, and gas, and water. Further technology, technology advances tinkers with this by making electrical equipment that is a little bit cleverer, or it has a lower power use. But and power supplies from hydroelectric schemes and renewable energy, such as tidal and wind power, has some use, but they are finite in their ability to keep pace with increases in demand. So what is the answer? The solution to the provision of sufficient energy to meet demand or to manage that demand to a level that can be met? And what might that solution be in the context of Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka is defined as an emerging economy or a developing economy and as a place in most respects moving upwards from its global status as a second world country to join the ranks of developed nations. Uh, this position, um, and I'm not being uh, unkind here, but this position in the second division, if you like, knocking on the door of the first division, is an exciting time. And its uh, relatively poorer routes holds the answer to the energy challenge. Uh, so not being so rich can be a good thing, and I'll explain. When mobile technology, uh, telephone technology, emerged in the West, ownership and usage grew very slowly through the late 1980s, and it became widespread in the 1990s. And by 2013, it is uh, a mobile telephone is owned and used by the vast majority of people between the ages of 10 and 70. By the time mobile phone technology became affordable and common in Sri Lanka, the spread in ownership and usage was far quicker than the slower growth in the West. 
More interestingly, the quality of the handsets and the standard of technology was available to people with average incomes far quicker and to a higher standard than was the experience in so-called richer Western nations. The same transfer of affordable technology can be traced through many other household items or personal luxuries, uh, only commonly available in the last decade or two. Now, if you take this slightly poor example maybe, but translate it to the technologies that are only now being developed in the West and often copied or improved in the East, in China and elsewhere, uh, and they will make the same kind of leapfrog journey. The technology that will enable uh, the more frugal use of energy and only slowly becoming affordable and available in the West will very soon be available in Sri Lanka and will provide tried and tested ways to harness new energy sources and conserve existing ones. Examples of this are vastly improved battery capabilities, wind and wave source energy technology, and the use of hydrogen, mentioned by our last speaker, and water as a power source. Nuclear power, given its vast cost and very long build time, is not really an option at this time. The opportunity Sri Lanka has is to avoid the costly and declining route followed by the major economies and jump straight to the new energy sources and technologies rapidly becoming available. Another way of putting that is that you don't have to go down the same road and make the same mistakes. You can actually jump straight to the solutions quicker than the Western uh, developing uh, nations already had. Now, to fully pursue this route, political and economic decisions must be made about raising and allocating the required funds and committing to a policy that makes more sense over a decade than it does over three or four years. And short-termism is the blight of most political processes and decisions. Uh, you will know that the average politician is more interested in getting re-elected than they are in solving the problems long-term of a country. Uh, by relying, um, I, I'm not going to comment on the detail ill and issues with the current electricity supply situation, other than to say the answer does not lie in more of the same. The phrase, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got, might be appropriate. If an undersupply of electricity relative to demand is a recurring issue, and I know about your outages that are quite frequent, um, and that the price to domestic and business users is part of a political process, and the pricing leaves the generating company with little or no margin to reinvest, then you continue on the same path and will forever experience the same issues. But relying on science and technology to produce lots of electricity is only part of the answer, as stated earlier. Sociological answers must be sought too. The uh, GDP in Sri Lanka is on the rise, and over a long period, incomes and standards of living rise too. What would it take for Sri Lankan people to reduce their electricity usage? Culturally, people are hungry to own and use all the good things that their growing incomes can buy. Aside of means of transport and a better house, many of the things they want to own and use require electricity. They also consume more. Restaurants get busier, internal tourism grows, shops sell more things, and manufacturers make more things. This is the reality of an emerging economy. All of these things grow the demand for electricity. You cannot reverse the trend for increased growth and consumption, and neither would you want to. But how do you reverse a trend in power usage? Some of the speakers have already talked about um, technology improvements in, in street lighting and other things, and this is one of the ways. But there is in developed nations a growth of individuals and groups who decide to live off grid. That is to say, they make a conscious decision to live unconnected to the main water or power supplies. Um, uh, and in many respects, they are using modern technology to live lives now, how it was lived more than 100 years ago. 
They collect rainwater to reuse. They insulate their houses to a very high degree to retain the warmth. They harvest sunlight to maintain a bank of efficient batteries to provide minimal essential electricity for lighting. They use wood or waste material to provide fire for heating and cooking. And they have a high level of recycling and reuse in order to minimize the amounts they actually throw out. This sociological trend is partly driven by a questioning of the need for growth in consumerism and materialism, a wish to partly detach from a world where many values and habits seem to be going crazy. Another pragmatic driver is the ability to save money. Let us take a typical UK household and I'll give you some UK figures. Father works full time and earns £1,500 a month. Mother works part time and earns £600 a month. They have two children at school. They'll pay about £800 a month for their home in total, all the bills. £300 a month for fuel and all other costs for their two cars. £400 a month for food. £200 or more for clothes, treats and a social life. So that leaves about £400 a month. Their cost of gas, electricity and water will often be about £200 a month or 10% of their net monthly income. However, for a single person earning maybe only £1,000 a month, the energy and water bill can be much the same. So that's now 20% of their income. Now, although these figures have no relevance for Sri Lankan society, many will suffer from the same issue that fuel for cooking, uh, gas cylinders particularly, fuel for their three-wheelers or motorbikes or their car uh, can all add up to a significant portion of their available income. Bills to heat a house, fortunately in Sri Lanka, is rarely an issue. How many Sri Lankans of whatever income might look to invest in making their house, their family or even part of their community have a zero reliance on centrally supplied electricity? The technology is arriving to help make these decisions easier. To do this, they would have to be comfortable in not feeling the ownership of lots of things, and specifically lots of things electrical, was a matter of importance, of prestige, of their standing in the community, of showing them arriving uh, at a higher social strata. For almost every major challenge facing major economies, the answer to the question, so where do we go from here? And this is the point I made at the beginning. Can we make the answer? Well, ideally, we wouldn't start from where we are now. For Sri Lanka, there is the opportunity not to address its electricity supply problems from a place the West has just arrived from, but leapfrog the issue and move straight to some answers that fit the future and not just repeat the past. And that's my main paper. And I would just add to that um, that... Uh, um, the, the, the message could be summed up in, in, in a few truisms. I've said it, if you teach an old, a new dog to do new tricks, it's easier than teaching an old dog to do new tricks. So doing things the way you used to do them um, is, is not a, a great way forward. Um, the best way to create a new habit is to get rid of an old habit. Uh, and technology is the tool, not the master. It's so easy to think that technology is the answer. It's not, it's the tool. And I've made the observation that politicians are genetically programmed to do anything to gain and exercise power. And therein lies a lot of the difficulties about you solving your problems into the future. Thank you very much. Yes, Chris. Uh, hello? Yes, hello. Hello. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. So Hello, uh, we are now moving to the questions. Hello, Chris. Yeah. Did you say something? Hello. No, uh, I would welcome any questions, but no one else has any, so <laughs> I don't expect any. <laughs> uh, but I think people could see your so, yes. presentation. I was running when you were talking. I don't know how many of you saw that. Ah, at the end. That's good. <laughs> yeah. you, you can show that. I have questions, but I will. Uh, so, anyone has? Yes, Chintaka. 
I think Duminda is trying to say something. Duminda, you, you, your microphone is off. You are trying to say something. Yeah. You have turned it off. Thank you, Chris. Uh, okay, thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Go ahead. Uh, what I saw at the end was, is, is, you know, we got the solution with our presentation to your concerns or your suggestions there. <laughs> this is what I wanted to sure. say. So, so it's like, uh, let's say you say like it's an unlearning things and starting uh, from somewhere else rather than where we are from. So yes. I think this, is, this is possible with uh, the right leadership at the right time. So I think we, if we combine both ideas and try to bring up a solution, there will be a good outcome out, <laughs> out of this. So I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to make my point here again, <laughs> supporting through Chris's point. Like uh, are learning and encouraging, uh, so it's, it's really encouraging presentation, and uh, it's quite relevant to my idea too. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, it was very interesting. I think Chris's idea. I can maybe uh, add something to it. You know, uh, what he said was, you know, we already have answers from the developed world. So he, what he wants is not to go back to the mistakes that the developed world or the developed countries did to get into that place. And uh, that, that's what we were doing at the moment, I, just, I think, according to him. So we have the answers, so just go directly to the answers and uh, find a solution. So, uh, yes, anybody has any questions, any comments? To add, add on to that point, like, but in Sri Lanka, when it's come to elections and the famous propaganda campaign is, we give you electricity, give me the vote. So that's just to add on to that point, like, Still, people looking for get into electricity and then live living in the, like modern, sophisticated things in the house and electric goods and everything. So that's the elect like when it's come to the election, and then they give the promise: we give the electricity, give a vote. So still, they are very big propaganda in Sri Lanka, especially in rural areas. So that means we are doing the like that means we are crazy, like doing the same thing and expecting a different result. I mean, I mean, this is this is the security issue that we have. The people don't have the access uh, to the energy uh, for an affordable price uh, the, at the time that they want it. So the politicians can uh, uh, cheat them and uh, get their votes or live by these uh, cheap uh, agendas. But if we, as an as a society, could ensure energy security, we can. Uh, take those uh, little uh, cheap agendas away from the society. So this is the the thing that we should try, or uh, Charmin the TRG try, to energy security, ensure the energy security. As uh, Jagat says, uh, energy security is interrelated with a lot of things. It's not just one uh, element that we should talk about. It is integrated. So through energy security, we can uh, ensure social security, we can, we can ensure economic security. So at the end, we address the whole you know, like uh, the, the uh, big concept and uh, uh, ensure sustainability for the whole uh, country as a well, whole, I think. So, the Chiranjeev's idea is good. Uh, they try this, but we could avoid this creating uh, energy security, I think. Uh, th that's my perception on this issue. I don't know what others think. I, I wanted to make the point that the most f the worrying statistic that has been quoted is the very high percentage of Sri Lankan inhabitants who do not currently have electricity. Because if I am a politician, I am going to promise them electricity. That will be a good way to get votes. Uh, you show me a family uh, in the east or somewhere that has no electricity, I will show you a family that will vote for the person who promises them electricity. <laughs> Everyone is stunned. No, no. I'm yeah. for... <laughs> Hello? Can I make a comment? Any comments? Can I make a comment? Uh, the politician yeah. can uh, cheat the people. As far as uh, these professionals and academics, they are not doing their responsibility to the society. Right. If these uh, professionals and academics, they are doing the 
they are a responsible society nobody can cheat the normal people yeah. so you mean educating people yeah as you said it's 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 our responsible to educate and build the capacity of the society regarding this energy and water and this kind of issues and uh, it is uh, not okay if we learn these things from somewhere and we just keep calm and quiet not uh, trans put in this knowledge to the society you know okay i think uh, since uh, chair has been a little bit uh, maybe tired i will uh, not following the text yes on this following i will which is also we have all seated the time i want to actually summarize i mean in terms of not really summarize but uh, now i think uh, this is our kind as i told you at the beginning it's a experimental you know pilot uh, session that we want to uh, you know uh, synthesize people from different countries different backgrounds uh, different uh, disciplines to come and discuss about the uh, issue which is uh, you know burning in south asia and particularly in sri lanka uh, it is interesting now uh, we you, we uh, discuss this thing without any agreement and it, but uh, and then we can see some kind of a convergence of ideas now i want to also share some of my uh, experiences now this is a book uh, we did uh, as a regional book uh, uh, of, of south asian energy this was done uh, by a, a german funded by german foundation and done by a indian organization but i wrote a sri lankan uh, country paper which was submitted to uh, 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 His Excellency, the South Secretary General, and also uh, it was in all six, seven, uh, or eight countries in South Asia. So this was done in 2011, and as a part of that uh, process, so there was a list of recommendations uh, done to uh, a kind of recommendation made to national uh, policy makers. So that means in Sri Lanka, this was given to Energy Minister that time, uh, Environment Minister. education minister chief minister of uh, andy uh, to some other people uh, high high level people now the problem is uh, to correctly mention uh, you know the our policy makers uh, they know the issue and they also know the uh, solution most of the time but the problem is there is no motivation for them to uh, solve these things no there is no inform uh, i think people use the circuit and lobbying uh, till that happen so uh, now i think today uh, i can confidently say regardless of what we have done this kind of forum this kind of uh, thinking this kind of uh, exchanges and networking is more powerful than recommending and giving uh, ideas to policy makers because this will educate ground level this will uh, also encourage a multidisciplinary multi created uh, or multi dimensional uh, solution to uh, you know the so called uh, engineering problem you know, eventually these are people's problem social problem somebody mentioned the word social research or something so i think we have to focus on whether it is uh, nuclear energy uh, hydro power or uh, renewable energy it should be a social uh, so it should be considered from social point of view so i think that we have done very in a very effective manner with a lot of uh, different angles but it comes or trickle down to how we in, encourage or educate people how we uh, ask people to ask more ask uh, you know how their money tax 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 money uh, used for uh, development of the country development and people's life so i think it's a really a uh, good good uh, exercise really good session thank you very much all of you for taking part and spending lot of time with uh, difficulties uh, technological difficulties first time uh, uh, users so it's really useful i think we should continue this uh, this kind of uh, exchanges uh, i was thinking about uh, having a separate session on uh maybe native building of south sri lanka uh you you all be invited but also we'll have different people so if you have any comments or any experience about the session in general uh we can share it and then uh post maybe we start from lahiru lahiru you want to say something 
Yes, sir. Actually, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity. Actually, as an MBA student in Sri Lanka, uh, we are getting uh, less chances of uh, networking with uh, this kind of professionals. So, it is a, a good opportunity for me to get ideas from uh, these experienced people from industry. And uh, I also would like to thank you all of these people, uh, the guys who joined for this conference uh, for their uh, precious ideas. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Anmal. Uh, uh, Paul, sir, very quick uh, comments, feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is very successful, and uh, we get uh, multidisciplinary opinion for one subject, and we will carry on this. Year. Mm. Yeah, thank you. And contribute continuously. And also, uh, compared to the first session, this is technically also successful. We are still broadcasting uh, till then. Okay. <laughs> Jagat? Yeah, uh, it was a great opportunity for me also. And uh, we have shared our experience and different uh, interdisciplinary subjects. And thank you all for uh, participating in this event. And thank you for all. Thank you, Jagat. Uh, Minda? Yeah, first, uh, thank you very much for inviting us and organizing the forum. Uh, this is, as, as I see, as, I, as we see, this, this is a timely uh, discussion and forum. So thank you very much to you first, and thank you very much others. I'm looking forward to, uh, for another session. And also, we are quite interested to see how we can implement uh, the idea. Um, I'm talking to myself because my experience back home, uh, I was trying at least to turn off a street light and save for the country. Uh, I don't know where this uh, feeling came from. So from that feeling, when I see this initiative from you, I was quite encouraged. We were, like Chintak and me at the moment, are quite busy and writing few papers to, uh, for a few conferences. So, but still we decided to do a joint uh, project to, to contribute thinking that this is a timely initiative from you. So thank you very much, everyone. And I really enjoy uh, listening to others. Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. And we particularly, we enjoy listening to your voice after a long time. It all lost. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be quiet and uh, you know <laughs> work on my research. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a great experience. Like, see different people and meet. Like, it's a good session. Like rather than going out and enjoy it with more friends or something like that, um, it's really interesting and we see a lot of things coming out and it's like a brainstorming thing and we can do a little bit like at least a small percentage for the country, be out of the country or maybe some people are doing their own business or own work or personal professional work. We get together all ideas and we share the ideas. It's really great. Like I'm really happy about this hours. I spend from beginning to end, like I spend very qualitative time with you guys. It's really important, and then it's really, really nice and nice to meet you all. And we need to have more sessions like this, and then we need to talk about how to nation building or anything, or any article or any research paper. That's what we can do. So thank you very much, Amin, for organizing this, and then I'm looking forward to for the next sessions or any upcoming events. Thank you. Very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe finally, uh, Chintaka, the chairperson of the section, thank you very much for sharing in a, in a long and difficult work, but I think you did a great job. So please uh, give your comments, uh, final comments, maybe. Yes, uh, well, uh, as always, you know, it was, was a great opportunity to talk to uh, some of the professors world and uh, your ideas. And uh, I learned that one of the things, you know, uh, as I mentioned, the awareness and, and uh, 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 it was very uh, like exciting uh, and very interesting. Uh, uh, for the last two days, I was spending some time on uh, searching and researching about this energy, and I found you know a uh, lot of information. And uh, today, the uh, the availability of information is uh, just enormous. Uh, so uh, I learned a lot about the subject. So uh, more than I expected, even. So uh, uh, so it's it's like. Uh, a very good session for all of us to, especially to learn about uh, a burning issue or, or becoming a burning issue uh, for the Sri Lankans in the, in the near future. So it's, yes, it's our opportunity to uh, contribute something. And I also found that there's a problem with 
with the data, as I mentioned uh, in, in previous presentation also, uh, that uh, with, with the reliability of information, especially when it comes to like some reports, I saw that without dates, you know, some uh, uh, information and some data without dates proper. So that's that's also another part that we have to look at, you know, to to, to scheduling and to like uh, uh, organizing this data. Uh, relate in this in this area, uh, so that uh, the future researchers or the future future or the policy makers can can go and look into those uh, information and make the uh, whatever the decisions. So yes, thank you very much, and thank you uh, very much for allowing me to uh, chair the uh, session. And uh, I hope you had a great time, and uh, we will uh, we will do something more. And also, uh, I have to make a kind request. If you would like to uh, share your presentations, whatever that you would like to do it, so uh, I would like uh, like to make a request to to share your presentation so that others can see what was some you know some of the presentations were not not available to see unfortunately because of the, these uh, technical problems. So if uh, you guys can uh, uh, share your presentations and so that others can also see and. Uh, learn something more out of it and uh, can do some more contributions. So thank you, uh, thank you very much, and have a good night. Yeah, thank yes, you. So I have to say thank you very much, Amit. Yeah, as a follow-up, I will uh, share the uh, abstract and the presentation among everybody. So if you need any uh, modifications, you can do that and send to me. Now, uh, finally, I want to say now uh, what we tried is not only uh, about uh, knowledge sharing. It's fun. It is learning from each other. It is also, you know, networking for future uh, activities, events. You can have, you know, all of you can join among yourself and uh, do whatever you like. So uh, now this is also uh, for uh, other people who really think, uh, you know, connecting internationally to international people. This kind of work is expensive, time-consuming. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, Difficult work, which is not uh, the case anymore. Now I have been in uh, regional conferences and regional organizing regional events, which spend a lot of money. You know, with the money, with a lot of people, you can't do it. But because of the advancement of uh, digital technology, particularly uh, Google Hangout and other uh, these uh, social tools, you can easily uh, get out of all these uh, traditional issues of organizing. So I think we should use this effectively, not only to talk about energy, but uh, developing uh, a country, for example, for 2 million people, Sri Lanka, out of Sri Lanka. So when we started working on this in 2000, maybe early 2000, we had a difficulty of how to connect them. Now that problem is clear. So I invite you to be uh, part of our community and discuss whatever the relevant issues to you. It's not necessarily to be uh, your research over, but there are general issues about the country, the development of the country, as uh, Chiranjeev mentioned, contributing back to the country. So we will have different sessions, and uh, please be in touch and uh, also make your suggestions. And by the way, you can uh, share this uh, YouTube uh, video among your friends and get their comments, and maybe you can improve in the future. Thank you very much, and good night. Good night, guys. Good night, everyone.